Hey, how's everybody doing out there on YouTube? This is Mark again, working on my classic build here, 68 Chevelle. You know, one of the things that's always been a challenge is trying to figure out uh, what my plans are going to be for the future with this particular car, and one of the challenges I always ended up with was fuel. Um, so, I'm kind of building this system for a couple of different setups. In other words, I'm building it so I can accommodate an electronic fuel pump or hopefully someday even fuel injection or throttle body, as some people call them. That would be my ideal goal so I can really get this thing running smooth and don't have to worry about weather and altitude problems and all that good stuff. Uh, but I'm starting off with a good old-fashioned carbureted regular pickup fuel system. So this particular gas tank I bought here, uh, which is looks brand new by the way, I picked it up off Craigslist for about 75 bucks was my start of my fuel system. Now the old fuel system that came out of this vehicle had one line built in, all right, one line. And this particular uh, one line is not what I consider great. Uh, this was the setup on a typical 68 Chevelle here. Um, so I decided to ditch this particular system and go to a two-line setup. The two-line setup, which you see here, is on later model Chevelles, but it doesn't matter whether you're building a Chevelle or anything. If you can get a two-line setup, that would be my recommendation. Now, if you look below, I have some links to some other sites. So Hot Rod Magazine is really where I got this tip. So Hot Rod's online uh, garage was a great tip I got uh, when they were doing their interview for their new, uh, basically, host. Um, so I chose this particular setup. I'm going to pull it out of the tank as you can see that this is actually in this particular model is a vent line but what you're going to see if you look at the Hot Rod Magazine link is they turn this um, vent line into a return line. All right, And when they did the return line I do want to highlight I'm going to take the sensor out for a second. When they took this out and they took it to a radiator shop and they extended this and in my case I wanted it with at least 5 16 tubing. They extended it down and when they extended it down they also bent it out to match uh, this particular unit as well or this is basically is the part of the sending unit and the reason why they did that is because when you if I'm going to use this for a return line somewhere down the road which is my goal I don't want the fuel jetting out in the same direction as my pickup I want it jetting out in a different direction. Uh, which is essential if you're going to be doing this particular modification because if not you're going to get a lot of air in your line. Alright, so I switched over to that dual sensor so what I'm going to have is I'm going to have my pickup and this eventually if I switch to electronic uh, to an electric fuel pump is going to be my return uh, which is essential. As you can see I have two uh, gas lines here which is not normal for a Chevelle this year but I wanted to go again uh, do some modifications for down the road so I chose to go this way so uh, since I'm switching over to a big block I got a 3 8 inch fuel line here and this is the old 5 16 fuel line which as you can see is cleaning up pretty well inside and out I just wanted to show you uh, what the old one looked like compared to the new one but I'm going to be using this old one for return so um, so I got my basically pickup and my return lines that are going to be matching up to this now the other thing you need if you're going to be getting rid of your vent line is you need to make sure you put a vent line back in. My biggest thing I want to avoid if you follow the videos below is I want to avoid vapor lock. And so I still need a vent line and that's very important. If I'm going to put the vent line in I want to make sure I put the vent line in right. And the way I chose to put the vent line in, and there's a lot of videos on this particular thing too, is you're going to want to put your vent line here. In my case I get a vent line with a rollover valve as you can see if you take a look at this. Now I uh, made an aluminum bracket here, attached my rollover valve, and the thing about this is you can see my tank is sitting now, normally in the car it's going to be sitting a little lower than this, not much, but your vent line does need to be higher than your fuel tank, it's very important, you don't want fuel to come out of this, you just want pressure to vent out. So you got to make sure your vent, again, is higher than your tank, and this is about where the tank sits, maybe about a half inch too high, but about where the tank is going to be sitting. All right. So I got my vent line, which is nice because this tank has some uh, other adapters on it. So I can throw my vent line on one of these. So now I got a pickup line. I got my return line. And I'm going to have my vent line. And this extra one here I'll have to, have to cap off. All right, if you do have to cap off lines, by the way, just to show you, um, because while I'm working on this, I don't want to get any dust or debris in the lines, um, which I'm going to be doing here. Uh, just 
while I'm taking things in and out is you can always throw a nice clean bolt in these to work as a cap while you're working so you don't get dust or debris in your fuel lines. And by the way, a nice thing just so you know, not advertising for anybody, but Summit, by the way, was great for the parts on this. This whole roll uh, you can pick up for next to nothing. Just however, watch out when you're picking up rubber fuel line like this, that you make sure to pick up one that matches the pressure rating. In other words, if you're going to be going electric fuel pump and you're going to be going fuel injection, you're going to need a line that handles at least 100 PSI of pressure would be great. 50 is like the minimum low, but 100 PSI would probably be greater. So watch your pressure uh, on your line or what your line can handle. All right. One of the things you really need to consider when you're building your line is you're going to need to consider clamps. All right. Normal fuel line clamps that came on these cars look like this. The nice thing about these particular fuel lines is when you squeeze them with the pliers and then you let go, they put equal pressure on the line all the way around, which is your goal. I know a lot of people like to use these particular lines like the, like here, and a lot of people don't like these. They kind of cut things up. They don't apply equal pressure on the lines and so they can damage them. But I decided to go since I knew at my heart of hearts for my project, I did want to go a higher grade down the road. I just decided to bite the bullet. You know, again, ordering from Summit. You can get these in bulk. These are clamps specifically rated for fuel injection. So these are higher pressure clamps. They're going to apply equal or better pressure on the line, and they're perfect for my 3 8 inch fuel line. So this is the start. This is an episode one of two on this particular one because I'm going to be showing you the fuel lines on the other end as well near my fuel pump. Right now I'm going old school with a mechanical fuel pump, but again, down the road I really want to switch to an electric fuel pump. So. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope this helps you figure out what you want to do. And again, save you a little bit of money and time. Gas tank, by the way, this whole project really didn't cost me that much. Gas tank cost me about 70 bucks. Uh, this line I ordered from, okay, inline tube, which cost me around 68 bucks, which was great. By the way, they do come bent up, so you do have to unbend them when you get them in the box. Anybody can do it. Just take your time and be patient. All right, so this was about 70 bucks for my tank. Uh, my second line here was another 70 bucks. My new fuel pickup right here uh, was about 25. And um, clamps and little knickknacks that I needed for along the way uh, cost me about another 30 or 40. But this is great. I don't have to worry about dirt, debris, or anything. So I wish you the best of luck on your hot rod project. This is a little bit on mine. You'll see more episodes to come, and I'll be talking more about my fuel system for this particular car in another episode. All right, you take care, everybody out there. Subscribe below, and you'll get notified when other episodes come. Take care.